Network, the solution for humanity. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حديث نمبر 240 of عمدة الأحكام جابر بن عبد الله may Allah be pleased with him and with his father narrated that we came with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pronouncing Talbiyah for Hajj. And the Prophet والسلام, commanded us to make our Ihram into that of Umrah. Question, what were they performing? They were performing Hajj Ifrad. They were performing Hajj Ifrad. How did you know? Because the Hajj Ifrad has got no Umrah in it. It has the answer in the Hadith. He said, we pronounce Talbiyah for Hajj. If they were doing Tamattu', he would have said, we pronounce the Talbiyah for Umrah to the Hajj. And if they were having the intention of Quran, they would say, we offered or pronounced the Talbiyah for Umrah and Hajj. So this is the difference. So Jabir is telling us, Jabir, may Allah be pleased with him, is telling us that we pronounce the Talbiyah of Hajj, the Prophet told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, make it Umrah. So now it changed from Hajju Ifrad into Hajju Tamattu' because they will make their Umrah, cut their hair, wear the normal clothes, do everything that needs to be done. Moving on to the following hadith, hadith number 241, narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas. May Allah be pleased with him and with his father, he said that when the Prophet وسلم, and the companions reached Mecca, assuming ihram for Hajj, on the fourth day of the Hijjah, the Prophet ordered them وسلم, to perform Umrah with that ihram instead of Hajj, meaning that their ihram is for Hajj. So the Prophet told them, flip it into Umrah. They ask, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what kind of finishing the ihram after we finish Umrah? What kind of being halal? Is it limited to this or that? The Prophet said, finish the ihram completely, meaning return back to your halal state, as if you did not offer ihram, meaning everything can go. Of course, everything that is halal, huh? one hears this and says, you can do everything you did not do when you were muhrim. So I can drink, I can smoke. No, these are haram things. We're talking about the things that are restricted for a muhrim to do. And this hadith, we learned that when they arrived to Mecca, it was the fourth of the Hijjah. So they had about four days of living normal life, not in the state of ihram. And the following hadith, hadith 242, this was narrated by Urwah ibn Zubair. May Allah have mercy on his soul. He said, Usama, may Allah be pleased with him, Usama ibn Zayd, was asked in my presence, how was the speed of the camel of the Prophet والسلام, while departing from Arafat during the Hajjatul Wada'? Usama replied, the Prophet والسلام, proceeded on with a modest pace. And when there was enough space, he would make his camel go very fast. Now, what do we understand from this? We understand that the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is not to harm others, is not to hasten in moving from one place to the other on the account of others. As we see the people nowadays in Hajj, 
we see people trying to push one another, trying to reach their destination ahead of others, as if this is what Hajj is all about. And this is wrong. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, pushing forcefully during Hajj is not part of piety. It is not part of piety to be the first. The first is the one who Allah accepted his Hajj. And that is why from Arafah to Muzdalifah, when the sun sets, people move all of them in their millions from Arafah to Muzdalifah. Usama ibn Zayd, may Allah be pleased with him, explains to us and describes to us how the Prophet used to ride his camel. He said the Prophet used to ride in a very slow pace. Why? Because of the crowd. And the minute there was an opening and there is no crowd, he used to let go for the camel to run quickly or to run in a fast pace. But whenever there were people, he would slow down. From this, we learn how ignorant people are in Hajj. Nowadays, only few vehicles are allowed to come in, in Hajj. And unfortunately, the way they drive is reckless. They're surrounded by hundreds of thousands and millions of pilgrims, yet they drive as if they own the road. Likewise, those on motorcycles, they do not pay any attention. They might harm someone. They might run over someone. They might hit someone. All of this for the cause of reaching Muzdalifah ahead of the people. And then what? This is Hajj. You're supposed to get closer to Allah, not to do these things that harm others. Now in the following hadith, hadith number 243, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped during the farewell pilgrimage at Mina for people who had something to ask. So the Prophet in that occasion designated some time to answer the people's queries and questions. A man came and said, O Prophet of Allah, I didn't notice I shaved before sacrificing. The Prophet said, والسلام, now sacrifice the animal and there's no harm on you. Another man came up and said, O Prophet of Allah, I did not notice. I sacrificed before throwing the pebbles. The Prophet said, والسلام, throw the pebbles and there is no harm for you. The Prophet والسلام, was not asked about anything which had been done before or after its proper time, but he said, do it and no harm is there for you. Now, the Prophet was asked about the actions on what day? On the day of an nahr on the day of slaughtering, on the day of Eid. Now you have to learn the sequence, the order. You go to Mina on Yom at tarwiyah which is the 8th of the Hijjah. What is the meaning of Yom at tarwiyah It's the day that the people prepare for Arafah, Muzdalifah and Mina by watering their camels. So tarwiyah meaning watering their camels. So they make their camels full of water so that it would not need to drink. They go and pray five times or five prayers. This is the Sunnah in Mina. They pray Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha and Fajr of Arafah. They shorten the prayers. So Dhuhr, Asr and Isha are prayed two rak'ahs, two rak'ahs. Combined? No. They pray each on time. After Fajr, they go to Arafah. And after Dhuhr, they enter Arafah and they spend the day there supplicating, making dhikr. They pray Dhuhr and Asr combined at the time of Dhuhr. Two rak'ahs, Dhuhr, two rak'ahs, Asr with an adhan and iqamah for both. And then after sunset, everybody goes and moves to Muzdalifa, which is not very far away. It's walking distance, but it would take you sometimes like 35, 40 minutes, depending on the pace you're walking. And they spend the night in Muzdalifa. But as soon as they arrive, they pray Maghrib, three rak'ahs, and they join Isha to it, whether they come before Isha or after Isha. But they have to pray it 
combined and they should not delay it until the middle of the night because if they are on the road and it's close to middle of the night they must pray it wherever they are even if they did not reach Muzdalifah. Once they reach Muzdalifah the Sunnah is to spend the night there and to rest because the following day they have a lot of things, a lot of activities to do. Once they pray Fajr, they leave. Can they leave before Fajr? Only for the women and the children. The Prophet gave permission for the elderly, for the women, for the children, and for the men accompanying them. So if I have my wife, I don't tell my wife, you go, I'm strong, I will stay. No, I have to go and accompany my wife. So they leave and reach Mina. The first thing they begin with is throwing the pebbles. How many pebbles do they throw? Three, seven? This is what we'll find after the break, so stay tuned. misinterpreted, misconstrued, and misjudged. Let's wake up from delusion and step into the world of reality with confidence. Find all the answers to confront or defy, reject or accept, dispute or challenge when caught in crossfire. crossfire. Misconceptions clarified, falsehood exposed, and truth revealed. Discover the reality with Dr. Zakir Naik in Crossfire every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12.30 p.m. UK on Peace TV. A friendly message by Dr. Zakir. Old Age Home. Al Quran, Surah Al Isra, chapter number 17, verses number 23 and 24 says, Your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him and that you be kind to parents. Whether one or both of them attain old age in your life, say not a word of contempt. Do not say off to them, nor repel them, but address them in terms of honor. And out of kindness, lower to them the wing of humility and say, My Lord, bestow on them your mercy, even as they cherished me in childhood. There is no place for old age of Islam. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Peace TV presents over 100 million years. At one of the largest peace conferences in the world, addressing a sea of spellbound spectators, over 30 world-renowned orators on Islam, with credentials impeccable. The truth of Islam. Deen is your way of life. It is our duty, our obligation. By following the Quran and Sunnah, we will give the message to one and all. To one and all. With articulation exquisite. Read the book of Allah. Islam is the easy way. It's the simple way. Remind each other. The Muslim is not a source of harm for other people. Collaborate with the people for good. This is the call of Islam. Is with the mission of spreading the truth of Islam. Do what you can to spread the word of Islam. Wherever we are, live like Muslims. Use your power. Allah is saying, why do you need anything else? This Quran is self-sufficient. The only book on the face of the globe, the Quran. How a human being should lead his life is given in this instruction manual, the glorious Quran. The glorious Quran. For peace to prevail on earth in peacemakers, Next on Peace TV.
Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. So, on the day of Eid, the first day after you leave from Muzdalifa back to Mina, you throw only seven stones. How big is the stone? Is it a big rock, seven pieces? Or it's a very tiny thing that cannot be seen? Scholars say it should be like this. It's like the seed of dates, for example, or a little bit smaller. So you throw it in the, what is known as Jamaratul Aqabah Al-Kubra, which is the closest to Mecca and the furthest from Mina. We have Al-Sughra, Al-Wusta, Al-Kubra, the smallest, the medium, and the largest. After you throw it, the Sunnah is to slaughter. This is the sequence. If you are mutamatti' or Qarin, you have to slaughter your Hadi. After you slaughter, you shave. And by shaving, you become halal. You can immediately go, shower, put your shirts, put your trousers, wear whatever you wish. Everything for a muhrim is now permissible for you except for intimacy with the wife. This cannot take place until you go and offer tawaf al-ifada and sa'i al-hajj. And what is the ruling on tawaf al-ifada? It is mandatory. It is a pillar of the hajj. If you don't offer it, your hajj is invalid. Even if you stand in Arafat and do everything except the tawaf, this is a pillar that must be performed. Once you offer the tawaf and you make the sa'i, your hajj is complete. Now you can do everything, even intimacy with the missus. This is all permissible. You have to though spend the following two nights minimum and maximum three nights in Mina, where every day after the adhan of Dhuhr, I go and throw the pebbles. Seven at the small, seven at the medium, and seven at the big one. Every day. Where do I collect the stones? From anywhere. You find it in Mina. As you walk, you pick it up and you throw. And you say Allahu Akbar with every throw, you throw it. And do I have to hit the pillar itself? Or is it enough just to fall into the pool? It's enough to fall into the pool. Seven for each one. And then you spend the night also praying Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and Fajr. You shorten the four rak'ahs into two rak'ahs, but you do not combine. Do I offer any sunnah for Maghrib, for Isha, for Dhuhr, before and after? The answer is no. Whenever you shorten prayer, you skip the sunnahs of Dhuhr, Maghrib, and Isha. But you maintain and observe sunnah of Fajr, night prayer, witr, etc. And the final thing you do after you finish your Hajj is you have to offer the farewell tawaf, and this we will come inshallah to mention later on. Hadith number 244. This hadith was narrated by Abdurrahman ibn Yazid. He said, I performed Hajj with Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, and saw him throwing the pebbles of the big Jamrah, Jamrat al aqaba with seven small pebbles, keeping the Kaaba on his left side and Mina on his right side. And he said that this is the place where the one whom Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed, that is the Prophet ﷺ, this is the place where he stood, is to have the Kaaba on your left, Mina on your right, and throw it from this side. Why? Because at the time, the back side had a mountain. So this is the only place or this side or this side you can throw it from. Nowadays, the mountain has been removed and all four sides can be thrown from. The Sunnah is to do what Ibn Mas'ud did. But if everybody is focusing on this area and the rest are free and empty and you don't want the crowd, you can throw from any place you wish. Why did Ibn Mas'ud said? that this is the place where the one whom Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed to, because Surah Al-Baqarah contained most of the rulings of Hajj, and a lot of it. So that is 
suitable for him to say that I've seen the Prophet and he is the one who Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed to. Okay, we move on to hadith number 245. Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh Allah, have mercy upon those who get their heads shaved. The companion said, Prophet of Allah, what about those who get their hair clipped? The Prophet repeated, may Allah have mercy upon those who have their heads shaved. And the Prophet والسلام, repeated that, and they repeated their inquiry. And what about those who have their hair clipped? The Prophet repeated three times. In the fourth time he said, and those who have their hair clipped. What is this? This is regarding when a person in the state of Ahram is making tahallul. He is making tahallul, meaning that he concluded his ritual. And now the last thing for him to become halal is to either shave or clip his hair. The Prophet وسلم, prayed for them to be or to have the mercy of Allah three times. And in the fourth he said, and those who clip their head, meaning cut it short. What do you understand from this? We understand that when you make a Umrah, Allah would reward you more if you shave your head. Because this is a sign of obedience to Allah. While clipping your hair, cutting it short, nobody would know that you offered Umrah. So it is part of showing the people that this is the trace or the sign of my ritual which I did. In an authentic hadith, when the Prophet was explaining alayhi salatu wasalam, hajj and the virtues of it, he said in an authentic hadith to the companion, as for shaving your head, Allah would reward you with each hair a good deed. So imagine that if you have a hundred thousand hair, Allah Azza wa Jal would reward you a hundred thousand good deeds, a hundred thousand hasana. And if you have more, it's more. And therefore, usually people try their best to get their hair shaved, to get their head shaved. And therefore, this is the sunnah. Nevertheless, Allah's mercy did not only restrict this sunnah for those who shave, but also those who cut short their hair or clip their hair. How should we clip their hair if we want to clip it? A lot of the Muslims make a general mistake. After they finish Umrah, they do this and this. That's it. No, clipping the hair has to be from the whole of head. So you have to cut short all of your head, not only a part of it or a side of it. So shaving is for the whole head, likewise clipping or cutting short should be from all sides of the head. Do you have any questions? Yes. Sheikh, can the person after completing his Hajj make his Salah 4 to 2? He can say, I'm a traveler, that's why I can pray my Salah as 2 for the Zohar and others. When he completes his Hajj and later he is staying there for some time, he'll say that I'm a traveler and can I read to Rabbah? Yes, as long as he's a traveler, he can pray two rak'ahs as long as he's staying in Mecca and he's still a traveler. However, the rule is even if you're a traveler, if you hear the adhan in the masjid, you must pray where the adhan is being called. And hence, if you're a traveler and you pray in the masjid, you will eventually complete your prayers. So even if you finish Hajj and you stay in Mecca or go to Jeddah or go to Taif or go to Medina, you're still considered to be a traveler and you can shorten prayer. But if you hear the adhan, you're obliged to respond and then you would not be able to shorten prayer. But in cases that you did not hear the adhan, you overslept and woke up, then you can shorten prayer as long as you are a traveler. Assalamu alaikum. Salam. I wanted to know that is there out of the three hajj, out of the three types of hajj, which type of the Hajj has the most fazilat? We've mentioned this before and said that the best of Hajj is Tamattu'. 
because it has two rituals, Umrah separate and Hajj separate. Then follows that Qiran, which is having the Umrah embedded in the Hajj with a sacrifice. And the last and third is Al-Ifrad, which has no Umrah and it has no Hadi obligatory, but if you want to offer Hadi, this is up to you. Sheikh, why do we have to make intentions loudly? Intention is not said loudly. We've stated this before that a talbiyah is different than the intention. A talbiyah is a form of dhikr. You say, labbayka Allahumma labbayka labbayka la sharika laka labbayk to the end. If I wear my ihram and I do not say talbiyah, is my umrah or hajj correct? The answer is yes. What is important is my intention. By assuming the state of ihram and everything that is forbidden and restricted for a muhrim is now restricted for me. Talbiyah is not an intention. It is a form of dhikr. We've stated that scholars differed whether it is mandatory or sunnah. And it is most likely to be mandatory in the sense that no one has ever left saying it. And this is a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. But it appears that if someone does not say it, he is not obliged to slaughter a sheep. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. This is all the time we have until we meet next time. Fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49 ARAY 3000 Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity.